What is going on guys? My name is Brent and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to go from this web page to this fully functional chat room. If I can spell. If you want to find out how to do this, go ahead and stick with me. Okay, the first thing I have to tell you is that you need to watch my previous tutorial on how to set up Socket.io. So right now we have our server and our client talking to each other and that is a prerequisite for this video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set up a row with two columns. Our first column will be our chat window, and our second column will be our user window. So let's go ahead and get that set up. So div, oops, div row, and inside here we'll have div column extra small eight, and then also uh, we're going to give it the class chat window. And then the next will be div column extra small four. And then we'll give it also a class of user uh, window. Oops, let's see. There we go. So inside of our chat window, we're going to have an order, unordered list. And each list item will be a chat message. So we'll have list item um, and then the list item will be an ng repeat for uh, every item in a message array that we're going to create. So ng repeat um, equals message in messages. What we're going to do is we're going to span um, a class equals username. So we can style that and span class equals a message and inside here will be the the array will be an object array so it's message dot uh, username and then here will be message dot message and then down here in our user window we're going to create an unordered list. And in this case, each list item will be a, um, a user. So what we can do is just ng repeat, ng repeat for user in users array. All we're going to say is give me that user's name. So just user and we'll save that. For the sake of keeping this video short, I'm going to paste some code and explain this here. But this is our chat bar, okay? So we have created a new row with a form horizontal. Uh, it's got a label of chat. Um, there is an input line uh, where we're going to be able to type our text in. Um, it is, has an ng model of message. And then there is a button, and the button has an ng click directive on it that will execute a function that we will create later in our controller called send message. And it will send our ng model of message to our uh, chat server. And like I said, I'm, I'm just pasting this uh, for shortness, and this is not an HTML or bootstrap tutorial. So going to our chat controller.js here in our projects, we are going to create a couple new functions. The first is going to be the prompt um, username function, and that's going to equal function that takes in a message. In that function, uh, that uh, message, the first thing we're going to do is do a boot uh, box dot prompt, which is basically just like your normal JavaScript prompt. Um, it's going to take the message and display it to the user and then we will get uh, the uh, data back from that prompt. So the data in this case will be name. So the first thing we want to do is if the name does not equal null, we want to socket.emit, that's sending to our chat server, the, um, the event called add user okay and then the data being sent uh, along with that event will be the username and then that username will be the name that is sent along uh, from the prompt now if there is no username they don't send one we need to go ahead and prompt username with the message uh, you must enter a username 
and that'll be that for now. The next um, will be send message. So in this case, it's going to be scope dot send message, and that will equal the function that takes in a message. And if uh, the message does not equal null, and the message does not, oops, the message does not equal just the empty string, then we want to um, socket dot emit the event message to our uh, chat server, and the message will have a be an object. Uh, with a message property and inside that we'll put message uh, and then what we'll do is we'll clear the um, scope dot message will clear it by just making it the empty string and we can save that okay so when this uh, controller first comes into scope or when it shows on the screen we want to go ahead and prompt the user uh, for their username uh, so what is your name and then what we want to do oops then what we want to do is socket dot emit um, the event request users okay and so what we're telling the server is we want all the users that are in the chat room uh, so in this we'll just send it along an empty object um, we're going to have uh, some on events that are going to be sent to our client that we need to respond to. Uh, so one of those will be socket.on users. When we get users back from the server, the server will send that in an event called users. And what it will have is a uh, object with data in it. So it'll the function will return the data. And then what we're going to say is scope dot users equals data dot users now we need to create uh, the data uh, the users and the messages array so let's go ahead and do that um, up at the top scope dot users equals an empty array and scope dot messages also equals an empty array so other events that can get sent to our client would be like a message event. So socket on, since we can send messages, we need to be able to re uh, receive them as well. So when we get an event that's a, mex a message, it will come back with data inside of it. And then what we'll do is scope.messages.push that data. And that data will have a username and the message included in it. Um, the next one will have socket dot on add user event and then function will come with data and then what we're going to do is scope dot users dot push that username data dot username to our user uh, list and then also we want to inform the chat room a new user came so scope dot messages uh, dot push where our um, username is our data dot username and the message uh, is has entered the channel okay let's keep going so uh, also to remove a user as well so socket dot on uh, remove user function will get a username to remove and what we need to do is scope.users.splice um, where um, scope. So first we need to find out where that user lies in our array. So scope.users.index of data.username. So it's finding out where in our array that username lies and then we're splicing one from that so it just removes that specific element from our array and then um, scope dot messages dot push um, where our message is or username sorry username is data dot username and the message is 
has left the channel. So we need one more event in case the server rejects our username. So socket, socket.on um, prompt username in case there's already a user with that name. So function data, um, we need to prompt username with our data dot message. And that will be enough for the uh, chat controller. Now let's go on to our server. So back in our server.js file, the first thing we want to do is we want to create an array of users. So we, anytime a new user connects, we can send that array to them and they'll have a list of all the users currently in the channel. So var um, users equals an empty array. Now inside our connection, this is when a specific user connection, so each connection is a unique. Um, so we're gonna create a, a username for each connection. So var username equals empty for right now. And then on a um, connection or on a request to users uh, event, so the client has sent us a request to the server that says request users is the event tag. So let's let's reply to that uh, socket. So socket dot on uh, request. Uh, if I can spell request users um, and so we're going to execute the function here uh, that we didn't send any data along with it so there's no need to put anything inside here for data um, that it will do a socket dot emit and now socket dot emit only sends data to the socket that request that, that, that the data came from originally so we're only sending data one direction, not out to everyone who's connected to the chat room. So socket.emit um, users, the event users, and the, um, the data inside of that will be users, and it will be our users uh, array. So we can just go ahead and save that. Next, we can go on to socket.on message. When the client receives a event from a, uh, when the server receives an event from a client called message, it needs to disperse that message to everyone. So function uh, that takes in the data of that message. And what we can say is io.emit. This time, io.emit means admit the message to everybody who is currently connected to the chat server as opposed to socket.emit. So io.emit, um, the event message. So spread the word. Um, and the data is um, the username is equal to username of the sender. And the message is uh, equal to data dot message. So let's go ahead and edit this socket on disconnect. Um, and instead of a user, let's just go ahead and give them their username. So we know who disconnected. So user name plus um, has disconnected. And then what we're going to do is users dot splice, similar to what we did on the client side users.index of um, and then the username and then we're going to splice one off of that array which just includes that specific user and then what we want to do is io.emit remove user and the data we're going to send along with that will be username and the username of that socket that disconnect. So there's one final event we need to react to and that's the add user event. So socket.on, um, the event is add user and then we get the username back in this data um, property there. And then we need to check if the users so this is our uh, users array up here, dot index of a data dot username equals negative one. Now index of returns a negative one 
if it doesn't find a matching user. So if there's no user in that array already with that username, uh, then it will return negative one. So that's one way we can check that. We want to, we, now we know it's a valid user that can go into our user array. So we want to say IO, which is emitting to everyone connected in the chat room, dot emit the event add user. And we're gonna send it some data here. And the data will be uh, the username. And that's going to equal data.username. And then next, we want to say, uh, go ahead and add it to our local connection. So username equals data.username. And then we also want to push it into our array of users. So users.push um, data.username. And that's all if the uh, username is a valid username. So else, um, we're going to socket. This is sending only uh, to the, the, the client that sent the bad username. So socket.on, or socket.emit, uh, I'm sorry, um, to prompt, uh, prompt username. And the data we're going to send is the uh, is the message. So message um, user already exists, and that is that. So I've saved everything and restarted the server, and the only thing left to do is to go ahead and test everything. So let's go to our project snippets in our chat room. We're presented with a prompt to enter our username, so let's do that. It sent our username to the server, and the server said, okay, that's a good username, sent it back to us, and so we said uh, it was okay. So we had a uh, Brent entered the channel. Now, um, one of the things is when we send a message, uh, we send that message to uh, the server and the server emits to all the connected clients. A more efficient way to do this would be to just go ahead and push the message locally to our message list um, on just that specific client and everybody else receives the message, um, uh, me the event message. So it wouldn't actually send it back, our message, our own message back to us because we already know what message we need to send. We should just be able to append it to our array. But we did it the lazy man's way and I'll leave that up to y'all to figure out how to do. Um, so let's go ahead and duplicate this tab um, and do uh, Tom is a new, um, a new, uh, chatter and so he got the list of users from the server so he can see that Brent is already in the chat room and if we go back to this tab we can see that now Tom is in the chat room and they also got a message Tom has entered the chat room so let's go ahead and just break these apart really quick so we can see that these are actually functioning like they're supposed to uh, so hello world from Tom and see now instantly, uh, real time, you Brent also sees that message. Hello, hello, Tom. <laughs> this is hilarious. Okay, so uh, there they go. They're talking to each other. So let's go ahead and disconnect Tom. And we can see Tom has been removed from our chat list by the remove user event. And also it's been displayed uh, the message Tom has left the channel. So there you have it, a fully functional real-time chat application. I hope you guys learned something. I know this video ran a little bit long, in fact, three or four times longer than my normal videos. Go ahead and let me know below in the comments section if you like the content or you thought it was too long and should be split up into multiple different videos. I'd greatly appreciate the feedback. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and also post those below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. Uh, if you liked the video overall, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. And of course, if you're feeling generous, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. I'd even greatly appreciate that a little bit more. Um, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.